making room for Jesus. And I heard, I heard the Spirit say that some of us are so full of ourselves that there's no room for God. Come on now. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We got to make room mm. for Jesus. Hey. For Jesus. Say it with Say Yes, 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 yes. That means that we got to get over ourselves. Come on. And realize that we are in need of a Savior right now. Because if we weren't, we would have fixed ourselves a long time ago. But we need God in order to do that. Man, talk about You know, you, we don't try to get right many a time huh. and fail. But once God gets that get right, you come say, on, come on. on. He's going to change everything. Yeah. Glory be to God. I realized this week that, uh, and I thought I was putting together individual songs. Oh. The Lord had revealed to me that we find ourselves in the series. Yeah. And it's funny how he does that because if y'all remember, it started off with worship starts with me. Right. Yeah. And then I preached a message called God Defined Our Worship. Uh -huh. And then last week I talked about God Requires Our Worship. Right. And this week he has a message entitled that he gave me called Preparing for Corporate Worship. Mm -hmm. So it's all connected in, in God's eyes. And, and I thought they were individual things. And God said, no, son, you need to look again. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I'm doing something that you need to grab hold to. So today's message is entitled Preparing for Corporate Worship. Our text today is going to be coming from Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to, uh, uh, we, we're going to begin to excavate right around verse 28. So when you get there, just put a pen in it. But I need, I need to ask a question. You know, do you know that coming before the Lord is a privilege? Yes. Oh, yeah. It's a privilege when we come before the Lord. When we, are, when we enter into the presence, are we prepared to receive from him what he has for us? Mm. Have we done all things necessary to ensure that our time in worship is a product and a true moment with God? <coughs> Did y'all catch that? A moment with God. What I need you to know is that that starts way before we get here on Sunday. Yes, sir. And I say Sunday because Sunday is the day that we assemble together. We call that corporate worship. But that starts way before we get here on Sunday. See, I'm of the mindset that we should come before the Lord with a spirit of expectation. Yes. A hunger for a nugget from him. Oh, something that will help us walk out our salvation. If we don't, then what's the point? We've got to come seeking something from God that's going to help us get to Friday. Come on, yeah. start to Friday. Yeah. Some of us just need to get to Friday. That's right. Matter of fact, some of us just need to get to tomorrow. That's right. Am I right? She said tonight. Amen. Some of us just need to get to the next step. Yeah. And some, and I don't know about you, but I need a word from God to help me along the way. Yes, sir. Yes. Because uh, I tried it on my own. <laughs> yeah, I tried it. Yeah, I tried it. I tried it every which way you could try. It yeah. didn't work. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. But when I had an encounter with Jesus, yeah. when I made room for Jesus, yeah. change yeah. came. Yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, all too often we expect the preacher to be prepared. But we're not prepared to be in the presence of God's yeah, Lord. Yeah, yeah. We want the set man of God to be prayed up, free of distractions, focused on exegy in the text so he can rightly divide the word of God and spiritually aware of the spirit of God in the atmosphere, humbly obedient to the power and the presence of God. That's our expectation of the set man of God. And we don't even take a moment to check ourselves to do a spiritual inventory to ensure that we are ready to be in the glory of God's presence. Yes, come on, yeah. We come to the assembly, meaning the body of Christ, the church, the ecclesia, uh -huh. with all sorts of stuff on us, in our hearts and in our minds, distracting us from receiving or just totally missing what the Lord God wants to impart to us. We don't come expecting anything from God. Therefore, we don't receive anything from God. Then we say, I am not getting fed. Mm. Mm. But the truth of the matter is, we didn't properly prepare 
and for Anthony to be assembled. Where the presence of God meets. What we will discover today is that the people of God should always prepare themselves before they enter into the presence of God. See, back in the day, they didn't just walk in from feeding goats and collecting eggs and tending cattle into the presence of God. They didn't just have an argument with their spouse, discipline their children, a confrontation with their neighbors, and walk into the assembly of God. No, 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 no. They had to be set apart. The Bible says consecrated. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Washed clean. Yes. Mm -hmm. Clothed and clean robe yes. with no animosity in their heart against their brother or their sister. Right. Oh, they couldn't just come in God's presence any kind of way. They need to be free from distractions right. with one clear focus in mind. To enter the presence of God to receive. Yes. The big idea this morning is this. Ready yourselves for the presence. Ready yourselves to be in the presence of God. Let us stand for the reading of the word. Hebrews chapter 12. Verses 28 and 29. And this is the word of the Lord. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus let us offer to God acceptable, somebody say acceptable, acceptable. worship with reverence and awe. Mm -hmm. For our God yes. is a consuming fire. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, we ask that you just fall fresh among us today, God. Let your word today, Father God, be something of substance, something that we can hold on to and meditate on, Father God, something that we can eat off of all week, Lord, that may draw us closer to you. Yes, now, Father God, in order for you to do that, I ask that you please decrease in me, God, and increase in you, yes. so that transformation of the heart may take place. Father, have your way in this place. Hide, dance behind your cross, Father God, and let my mouth do your bidding, God. So that you may be magnified and you may be glorified. Oh, Father God, I am willing, ready, and available. So pour me out this morning, Father God, as a drink offering, Father yes. God. Let me be broken bread and poured out wine for those that's not strong enough to feed themselves, oh yes, God. Lord. So that you, God, may be glorified. Oh, yes. yes. So, Father, have your way. And do what only you can do. Yes. Speak to our hearts, God. Yes. Give us a word, God, that we may hide it in our heart and we may not sin against you. Yes. Yes. This is my prayer, and I believe it shall be so. In the mighty and conquerous name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Give your king a hand clap of praise on the way down. Yes. I pondered upon. Israel, thinking about Exodus 19, when the people of God were encamped around Mount Sinai, okay. and God had spoken to Pastor Moses, telling him to ready the people of Israel, that he was going to come to them in the thick of a cloud, God was going to descend upon Mount Sinai so that the people could hear when he spoke. And he said also so that they might believe Pastor Moses forever. Amen. They couldn't just come before God without preparing themselves. Amen. The Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Let them wash their garments. Hmm. Here's a pattern for worship. There is a pattern for worship. There is a pattern for coming into the presence of God. God was establishing a pattern that will be instituted in the tabernacle way back here on Mount Sinai so that the worship will be pleasing to him. Oh, come on, somebody. Not to me. Right, right. Not to you. No. To him. Right. There are some things that we need 
need to do before we come before the Lord in the assembly of his presence. Exactly. Are y'all hearing me today? Oh, yeah. There's some things that we need to get together before we just show up in the house of the Lord, hey. before we just assemble together for a prayer meeting. There's some things we need to do. Right. The text says, let, the, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Yes. It's right there in the middle of the text. The first thing we need to do is be grateful to the Lord. We need to be grateful to the Lord. Receiving salvation is the only way that we can enter into the kingdom that God has, that we can reside in this kingdom that can't be shaken. The only way we can get in is with gratitude. Yeah. Is the only acceptable worship for God. Be thankful for what he done for you. And if he never does another thing, you still got to be thankful. Amen. Because what he's already done is too much. It's enough. It's more than enough. Huh. He did what I couldn't do. He right. did what you couldn't do. Right. He gave up his... How many fathers we got in here? How many fathers of boys we got in here? <laughs> now, if you love your boys, do you think you can give one of them for some folks you don't even know? Oh, come on, somebody. I love my boys, and they grown men, and I'm still crazy about them. Amen. That's what God did. That's what God did. He looked at us and he looked at his son Jesus and he said, Jesus, you got to go to the cross for people that are yet to come. I can't see myself saying, Vance Jr., boy, you got to go and give up your life for some folk we don't even know. I don't think that's in me. I'm just, I'm just talking about me. <laughs> but it was in God. That's the only way. We need to be thankful. That's the only acceptable worship to God. The Bible teaches us there is no greater love than to lay down your life. Right. Did not Jesus go to the cross for you and for me? Yes. They didn't take his life. He surrendered his life. Yes. He's God. He could have did anything he wanted to do. He could have winked his eye and destroyed everybody. Yeah. Yeah. But he gave his life. He willingly surrendered his life mm -hmm. for you mm -hmm. and for me. That's what he did. How can we not be grateful? How? See, I think there's a thing, and I'm going to invent something. Is that okay? Yeah. I think it's called convenience gratefulness. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. uh oh. We are grateful when it's only convenient to us. Oh, come on, somebody. As long as we can do our own thing and be in our flesh, we think we're doing something. We want to be grateful when it's convenient. When we, you know, got a little struggle we're going through, then we want to call on God. When, when, when we need a blessing, you know, we need something to come through for us, we want to... Call on God. Convenience gratefulness. We've got to be grateful all the time. If he never does another thing, we've got to be grateful. Amen. That he laid down his life so that we may be reconciled back to God. So when God looks at you, he don't see you. He sees the Jesus in you, which makes you righteous. And we know we're not even deserving of that. Amen. It's Jesus' sacrifice that makes us righteous. It's Jesus that lives inside of us. That's why God can stand in sight of us. Right. Mm -hmm. Without that, you miss that. I said that's the only reason he can stand the sight of us. That's right. Some of us got so much sin in us that he can't even look at us because God can come on from us. Him and sin can't exist in the same place. Right. Mm. But because of the Jesus in you. Mm. We have to be grateful. So when we come before the Lord, we got to do it with the right spiritual intent, which is him being glorified. Yes. Us walking in humility and an attitude of gratitude and a heart of thankfulness. That is the only acceptable worship to God. Yes. Period. We show our thanks by God by making sure that we're prepared to be in his presence. Yes. Or well, somebody may have okay, Pastor Well, how do you do that? Well, I'm glad you asked me. <laughs> First of all, there's no strife in you. 
There's no strife in you. You're at a place to where your spirit is set. You're not looking. You're not looking for ways to drum up drama. Now I know some folk love drama. Oh, come on, somebody. We all know somebody that loves drama. And if you don't know nobody, guess what? I ain't gonna say it. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> there's folks that just love drama but we've got to be in a place where there is no strife in us we're not looking to you know cause trouble or be malice or, or, or have any of that stuff in us no anger no anger some of us can be in the car and have an argument with our spouse and walk right up here and ain't repentant, ain't ask for forgiveness or none of that. We just walk right up in the place here. Oh, come on. Y'all act like a lion or something. <laughs> <laughs> be out in the parking lot. Well, you said it. Oh, oh right through doors in church. Ain't repentant, ain't asked for forgiveness, ain't made it right. You just come right into the presence of the Lord and you stand there like someone did something to you all covered up and... <laughs> Touch and then you're here and you don't even come and put it at the feet of God. Jesus. That's what the church is for. Yes. Amen. You hear it, you don't even come at the put it at the feet of God because you're so scared of somebody's looking at you. Mm-hmm. But don't you know that's what church is for? Yeah. Church is for hurting yeah. folks. Church is for broken folks. Church is for the misfits. Church is for the misrepresented. Yeah. The doubt and trust. Those that need a healing. Those that need a savior. Church yeah. is for prayer. Church yeah. is for broken people like me. Yeah. And the only way we're going to get it whole if we're willing to say. God, I'm going to put it in your hands. Yes. Amen. Whatever you need to do, that's what you do. Amen. You just show me how I can help. Amen. But we're so worldly. Oh, well, sister, brother, deacon, Dr. Love, when you're looking at me, so I'm going to go up there and pray. Who cares? Don't you know prayer is what church is all about? How can the enemy have you so jacked up that you think your prayer in church is something wrong with that? In what world does that make sense? <laughs> we can't come to God any old kind of way with stuff in our heart. The Bible says this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 to 24. This is what it says. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and then remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go first be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Yeah. What is your gift? Anything you want to give to God. Yeah. But God ain't going to bless that thing if I got some resentment in my heart against my brother. Yeah. Either my physical brother, my physical brother, my church, whatever kind of brother you got, no matter. Yeah. Your neighbor, if you got something in your heart against someone else, God ain't going to bless He's not going to bless that thing. He tells you to go back and make it right first. Yes. Come on. Then come back and I got something for you. Right. I'm going to give you a double portion because you followed the instructions yes. and you was obedient. Yes. Yes. Are y'all hearing me today? Yes. Amen. Yes. We need to come before God with a right heart, y'all. Yes. A right heart. And that heart does not say it's all about me, 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 me. That heart says it's about him, 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 him. Amen. Worship so he can be glorified. Yes, yes, yes. So he can be glorified. We were made to worship. Amen. And we can't come with contaminated stuff in our spirit. Hear what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. Whether this is an argument with Bob or an issue with sister or brother, it doesn't matter what it is. We need to get it up out of us before we come before the Lord. Yes, amen. If we want our prayers to be answered. Amen. If we want to come before him right. And that doesn't mean he answers us. It's not because we want to. But you got more chance. <laughs> if this is right. What I mean by this? The heart. Yes. The body. Your body is a temple Jesus resides in. And I'm not just going to preach to you on purity. I'm just simply talking about doing what's right. Amen. When nobody's up. Yes. Right. Come on, somebody. Amen. Yes. Don't you know that's when you get your strength? You don't get your strength when everybody's watching. You get your strength on the back side of the mountain when you can do what's right and nobody's watching. That's when you get strong. So when the animosity is coming, when all that stuff comes, you're like, why are you standing a long time? You might get seen now, but I've been doing this thing a minute. Hey, come on. 
Oh, come on, somebody. That's right. Because when you're back, you're on the other side of the mountain. God is maturing you. He's yeah. growing you. He's strengthening you. He's working out your spiritual muscles. You're doing cardio yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. On the back side. Yeah. Not in front of everybody. Right. Because when he brings you out in front of everybody, you're going to be ready for business. Yeah. 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 Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. He, you're going to be ready for business. Amen. Am I right about it? Yes. You're going to be a warrior. Yes. Not just in title. Mm. My God, my God, my God. Yes, Lord. We need to come lifting his name up in worship. Focus on him. That we expect. You got to come expecting God to move. You got to say, Lord, I don't know what you're going to do when we meet with the other brothers and sisters today, but I know you up to something. God, I'm expecting something. God, I need a word from you. Yeah. God, you know the situation I'm dealing with. Yeah. Lord, I need you to speak into my life. And I don't care who you use to do it. I just need a word from you because guess what? It may not come from me. Yeah. Right. Oh, come on. It can come from that sister that you bump into in the hallway. There you go. Yeah. That brother that in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Yes, he will. Yes. He will use them to give a word to you. Well, if you wouldn't have came, you wouldn't have got that word to you. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. We need to come expecting because if we don't come expecting, we're just going to be mad because we just had an argument with our wife, slam our door, the mother say, hey, you just keep walking on past over to the church. <laughs> you just missed your work. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you what I know now. Because you were there and we had you focused. Come on. Watch this. On worldly things. That's it. Yeah. Versus spirit things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not in your heart with the right, you would have been already in the spirit when you got to the wrong one. And you would have received that word. Amen. Or that deed. Yes. Yeah. So it may not be, or it may be some help that you need. Mm -hmm. Or oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Mm -hmm. You may have a need and you've been praying to God about it. And you know that that brother in the parking lot may be able to fit that need. All right. mm -hmm. But because you're so focused on something else, you missed that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And God was trying to help you. And you said, God, why haven't you helped me? He said, I'll send you three people. You can go to home. <laughs> Entering to his presence. Being around other believers. Being joyful and excited about being in the presence of the God. When is the last time you had a genuine joy for being in the presence of the Lord? Think about that. You have to, that should be a joy. For, it shouldn't feel like work. It shouldn't feel like an obligation. If it feels like an obligation, there's something wrong with your relationship. Are you hearing me? I love serving the Lord. That's it. If anybody been around me, and some of y'all have, ready for too much, oh, you, all I got for you is Jesus. Y'all know that about me. That's that's what I, this is who I am. My grandbaby, he just came up to visit me from Florida, like they got here Friday night. And he's first thing he said, Papa, you going to absolutely we're going to church. <laughs> That's all I got for you. Whether you're my family or not, all I got for you is Jesus. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. My life don't change because situations change. God is still my God. That's it. I'm still his son. That's right. I'm still serving him. Amen. The best of my ability with all I got yeah. until he called me home. Amen. Amen. You understand? Oh, yeah. But see, too many, too many times our relationship with God depends upon our situation and our circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Can I talk for a minute? Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on. You know, if I ain't got nothing else going on, then, you know, I'll make a little room. I'll make it over to the church house, or, you know, I'll I go do this, or I'll go serve on this, yeah. this, you know, yeah. BS, you yeah. know. You know. In what world is that reference? Sorry, Sarah, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> because when you expect God to do something, God shows up and he shows up because he's amazing like that. Amen. When you have a spirit of expectation, he's going to bless you. He's going to give you something that's going to sustain you because you expect it. The Bible says you have nothing because it's blessed. Right. God, I need to work. God, you know my marriage is, 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 is weak right now. I need some help. God, we need to see you move in this thing. Not to, not to pull us apart, but to bring us closer together, God. Father God, what? 
Oh, let's stop passing cases. Because see, that always stops us looking at ourselves first. See, we don't want to do that. We too busy saying what he ain't doing and she ain't doing versus saying, what am I not doing? Right. Lord, what can I do to make this thing better? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to even, Lord, change him. Lord, change me. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. Pastor Benson, you pray for him. You need to pray for yourself first. Yeah. Then pray for him. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll pray for him, but the point is, is that you need to find out what you need to do first. Right. right. Come on, y'all act like I'm, I'm tripping. It's got to start right here. It's got to start right here. It starts right here with me. Amen. That's God's daughter. I can't tell him what to do with his own kid. Right. She belongs to God. Amen. Am I right? Right. I can't control what he better do. She got to deal with that. He got to deal with that. I can control what I do. Because I want to be obedient. Watch this even when she's not. Right. And I hope she want to be obedient when I'm not. Amen. Because it's not about me. Mm -hmm. It's about him. Yeah. It starts with us. Amen. Am I doing the things that I need to do before I come before the presence of God so I can receive from him what it is I need to receive? Yes, sir. The text goes on to say, and thus that I offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. Mm -hmm. My second point is this. Our worship has to be acceptable. Yes. What does a worship or, or, or acceptable worship look like? Does it look like prepare yourself daily? Especially on the days that you come for corporate worship on Sunday. Do you prepare for that? Does it look like pondering upon the people huh, that you want to take to the altar and pray for who maybe can't do it for themselves? Do you keep a list? Is that list active and, and loop and liquid? The people that you need to pray for, that you need to bring before the altar, do you just slide it in your own pocketbook or your front pocket or your purse or whatever? You just, it's just there. Until you're going through the first thing plus a bubble out of the open. Or do you, all right, this is the list. Saturday night, I'm going to pray for these people tomorrow. Matter of fact, I'm going to take them to the altar and we're going to lay them down on the altar. We're going to put them in the prayer box. I'm going to ask to pray for them because I believe that God needs to do something in their life. An active list. Yes. A liquid list. Yes. That's constantly moving because you're constantly adding to it. And you're taking away as God moves. Are you hearing me? Oh, yeah. That's proper preparation. If you want to pray for somebody, mm. you start praying for them then. Yes. Matter of fact, I'm just going to pray for you. We're going to start right now. Give me your hand, girl. Mm. Give me your hand, sir. Come, come, come walk with me. Get a little closer. Yes. And here we're going to continue to pray. We're going to put them on that list. We're going to pray for them all through the week. And Sunday, we're going to come and put them on the altar. We're going to ask folks to pray for them because we really want God to move. Exactly. Yes. We really want God to move. Yes. We're not just talking about it, we're being about it. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Prepare, prepare, prepare before we get here. Are we making sure the day leading to up to Sunday worship that we're ready to receive the fullness of the Sabbath? Are you ready for Sunday? What are you talking about, Pastor? You need to be ready for the day of corporate worship. You need to be ready for the day that you come together with the saints. You need to be ready for the Sabbath. Doing all the things that you need to do so that you don't spend the Sabbath, watch this, running errands. Last time I checked, he said the Sabbath was holy. Rest. Rest. I'm giving you permission to rest on Sunday. Rest. What does that look like? It can look different for most of us, but the main thing, you ain't running errands, but you enjoying it with your family. Just relaxing in the arms of God. Maybe you go have a bite to eat and you go home for an afternoon siesta, then you cut up on the couch with some oil ripped by the popcorn and you get on the blanket and you watch the rom com come on somebody. <laughs> because that's what makes her happy. And that's okay. But every now and then we watch Wild Earth, you know, so we get that <laughs> How are you feeling? You're relaxing and you're rejoicing on the Sabbath. That's what it's been. Not 199 errands because you couldn't do it through the week or you save them all to do on Sunday. That's not resting. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to help you. Because now you're doing two things. You're getting two day nights in one week. Right. That's good. That's good. There's something about rom coms and popcorn, fellas. I'm telling you. Something about rom coms and popcorn, brother. You're missing it. Yeah. <laughs> Come to a very special Sunday. 
You see what I'm saying? You're resting together. Because sometimes, don't you know time is one of the most expensive commodities? Yes, 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 yes. Time with each other. Especially if you're busy. If both of you are working and you're raising babies, you're busy. You're busy folk. So when you get that one-on-one -on -one time, take full advantage of it. Walmart will be there tomorrow. <laughs> it will, trust me, it will be there tomorrow. The nail salon will be there tomorrow. Golf will be there next week. It ain't going nowhere. It'll be there. Use your time wisely. Rest on the Sabbath. Let it be what it needs to be to you so your family can be rejuvenated. It might just mean taking your kids to the park and y'all just hanging out there eating a snow cone and you push them and watch them work. Whatever it is. Rest. 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 Enjoy the time with your family in the arms of God. Do you take the time to prepare for Sunday through the week or on Saturday? Do you lay out your clothes for the next day? That's one less stressor in the morning. Some of y'all, it takes 30 minutes to figure out what you want to wear. <laughs> An hour to decide. And another hour to put them out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yes, I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> <At all. laughs> Make that decision at night. And say, I'm not going to change my mind in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, see so what y'all are wearing. You see this? So when you get up in the morning, you need to put this on. Amen. <laughs> That's one less stressor you got to deal with in the morning. That might stop that argument that you're going to have <laughs> before you get here. Oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> Anything you can do to make your Sabbath a more peaceful day, that's one less stressor in that morning, so you can go into the presence of God, ready to receive fully what he has for you, you need to do that. Amen. For some of us, that's putting meals in the crock pot. That's right. That's right. I don't want to run cooking on Sunday. I want to with me. On the couch. Eat popcorn. This is smile. I don't want to run around there. Uh, I like watching the work. Let me stop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. To make it easy for both of us. We might just want to keep the reminder to take a nap. That's okay. That's what it's for. Preparing for Sunday. Way before you get here. So when you walk, when you get ready that up in that morning, you know your day is made. Your day is made. There's no stress that's going to come up. He's about not by you anyway. Right. Because you have a plan. Mm -hmm. You know how it's going to end up. On the couch. The <laughs> That's how it's going to end up. It's going to start peacefully because we got a plan this morning. You know, we got a coffee mug. Doc, we can just hit the thing and make coffee. And, you know, once you get that first cup of coffee, everything changes anyway. Right. So it comes alive. Everything you can do to make it easy. And maybe it's just me. See, I, I got issues, y'all. I got issues. Because my mom used to tell me, boy, you can't think in a dirty, cluttered house. Mm -hmm. That's what she used to tell me. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's right. That's right. She used to tell me that. She used to say, as soon as your feet hit the, hit the floor, make your bed. You won't be lazy the rest of the day. So there's, I, I live with a sense of order. That brings me peace. We need to be prepared. For a day. Hmm. Are we creating an atmosphere to hear from God on our way to worship Him through conversation, through song, leaving all the distractions outside the door? There you go. Create an atmosphere. Yes. When is the last time you've been driving with your spouse and you asked him or her, What does God say to you today? What's the thing on your heart? What do you want God to do for you this morning? Very important questions. Why? Because if I know those things, then I know how I can pray for her. Right. And with her. Yeah. Or with him. Or with, am I right about it? Right. When is the last time we asked those questions? What do you want God to do? Mm -hmm. How do you want him to do it? What do you want God to do to our children? What about our marriage? What do you, what, what do you see our marriage about this now? How do you want God to work on that? Very important conversations. But good, healthy conversations. 
Amen. Because now you give that other person a chance to speak and you just be quiet. Yeah. It's not a defense. It's not a going back. You're listening. That's why you ask the question to listen. Yes. To gain information. There you go. So you can know how to pray and how to move and how to operate. Right. Not And this is not an attack on you. Right. Or your character. Right. Right. Don't let your pride tell you that. Mm -hmm. It's a fact-finding mission. Yes. Yeah. Create an atmosphere for worship, leaving all the distractions outside. So when you come here, you know how you can pray for him or her or that family or whatever's going wow. through. Or do we just come in and watch this with all kinds of stuff on us mm. with a negative attitude, mm. negative Nancy? Oh, wow. <laughs> right? Right. Nobody in the body of Christ wants that. Amen. Leave that at home. Amen. <laughs> If you can't get it off you, then stay home with it. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> Come on. Because we need love in this gathering. We need to build up. We need to encourage. The world tears us down enough. We don't need that. Right. We don't need someone pointing out everything we do is wrong. We can give you a list if you ask them. We know all that stuff. We need people that's going to love us in spite of us. Yes. That's what the body is for. Am I right? Yes. Preparing for worship, that's what we're talking about. Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. Huh. All right. All right. Lord. What about our homes doing praise and worship? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Worship bands up here doing their thing, and the presence of God is here, and we're like this. <laughs> you ain't looking up scriptures, praise and worship time. What are you doing? Right. <laughs> you ain't fooling me. Look, look, I was looking up my Bible. We ain't even open our Bibles yet. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's the church folks say. They don't think ahead. We just say the first thing because, you know, we feel some kind of way. Mm -hmm. but. We're singing. We're worshiping the Lord. It's about Him. Yes. Right. Not Insta spam or Satan book. Oh. Preparing for worship. Right, right. Preparing, walking around doing the altar call. God is trying to get somebody saved. We make the coffee and go into the bathroom and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I understand you got to go, you got to go. But a few more minutes ain't going to hurt. Right. You know when the altar call is coming, go before that. Guess what? It's the same time almost every week. <laughs> Brought about 10 or 15 minutes, you know. But y'all know what I'm saying. How is that worship? In what setting is that reverence? Preparing for worship, you know what? I'm turning my phone off. They have to wait till I get out of church. That's what I do. I turn it off and I leave it in the back. Because nothing more irritating when someone's preaching or teaching, not just preaching, but teaching or instructing, and their phone is going off. Because they're distracted now. Even though they may not look, they're distracted, and the whole room is distracted. Turn it off. Set it down. Matter of fact, I love paper. Get you an old school Bible. Something you can hold on to. It's a page that's turned. Because that's what I'm saying with my Bible book. Yeah, I know that. But you know what? You know what books in the Bible have to be got books. You missed that, didn't you? You learn exactly where they're at. Where is the reference in any of those things, y'all? Those are not acceptable in worship. We've got to prepare ourselves to get to the presence of God. Make sure our heart is clean. Make sure our mind is focused. Make sure our spirit is open and ready. Checking for our brothers and sisters who might be encouraged. Are we looking for the unfamiliar faces that might be new that we can greet and welcome with love? That's me. Or are we clicking up with the usual suspects? You ain't prepared. See, I want to level somebody new today. Matter of fact, I want to level them so much I'm going to sit with the first new person I see. 
that's being prepared for worship. Oh, come on, somebody. Being prepared, being prepared. God is pleased when believers do good. When we, te when, we, when, we te when we teach each other, when we learn, when we share what we learn, all those are good things in the eyes of God. We've got to be prepared. That's what I'm saying. No matter where you go to this church or any church you go to or any assembly that you go to or the people of God are there, go prepare. Yeah. Go expecting something from God. If you're not expecting something from God, then why are you going? Why are you going? When I go to a men's conference, whether I'm preaching or attending, I go with an expectation. I want God to move. That's why I'm going. Yes. Not just so I can hang out in fellowship. I can do that Monday, any, any day of the week. Yes. Right. I'm going because I need to hear from God. Amen. So if my spirit's not right, I'm not going to, I'm not going to show up. I got to be right. Now, I'm not saying get right before you go. What I am saying is prepare yourself. There's a difference. Preparation. You know that you're coming here. You know that it's Wednesday night. You know that it's women's ministry. You know that whatever connection you get, whatever it is you connect with, you know that it's coming. Prepare yourself. Some of us got good memories. Some of us don't. I know some of us got good memories. You know why? Because some of us come here every Sunday. We never take a note. <laughs> and I know y'all can remember everything I said because I don't say a lot. <laughs> right? So somebody preaches, you know, a couple times a month, maybe 30 minutes to an hour, and God doesn't say nothing that's worth no way. Come on. No Why? Expectation. Expectation. Amen. I take notes everywhere I go. Whether it's on the community meeting that I'm on, or I'm going to have dinner. <laughs> Not long ago, me and Sherry had dinner with John and Kathy Franklin. And we were at, uh, what were we on the uh, the, uh, some state house in the hockey field. Mm -hmm. He's talking just what I'm doing. You know me, don't you? <laughs> this was a social thing. Yeah. But I know anytime you're around, John, right. if you know him, he can drop a nugget on you. Right. Yeah. I'm telling you what I know now. Yeah. So I got to be ready. Because yeah. right. he'll drop something in your spirit. You'd be like, hmm, okay. Yes. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. There's something. Hear me when I say, there's certain people you be around That's right, that you just know. You don't know when. Yep. You don't know how. But, it's but you know it's coming. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Yes. John is one of those people. Yes. Why? Because of his mentors. <laughs> See, you got to understand where man came from. Yes. <laughs> this man was mentored by Henry Blackaby. Mm. Think about it. I was like, Ooh, he, he was mentored by Henry Blackaby. He's the guy that, that invented the Experience in God series. Yes. Oh, awesome. You're not going to be around John and not get a word. That's right. This life either. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So you got to know where man came from. And, and, well, I'm not talking. But I'm just saying, we got to be fair. Jesus came from God. Yes. And if he shows up here every Sunday, there's something he's going to say that's going to be noteworthy. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And it may not be a whole, it could be one thing. And it could be that one thing you need that changes the trajectory of where God has you going. Amen. How do I know? Because I'm a product of that. Amen. I'm a product of that. One word changed my life. There may be days, but most of the time, you got to come ready. You got to come ready to receive from God. That one thing. And then when you take those, let me help you a little bit more. Make them personal with you. Put your name back in. Put that thing in. You know? I mean, that Vance needs to do X, Y, Z. God said to Vance, X, Y, Z. That's how I take it. Because it's for me. Personalized. 
you can go back and reflect on that thing, yes. and God will give you a deeper understanding. And you will begin to search that thing in Scripture. And ain't gonna tell them what kind of treasures you're gonna find. Right, right. I'll let y'all go. My last point is this: Verse twenty-nine says, "For our God is a consuming fire." Third point is this: You gotta have reverence for a holy God. You gotta have reverence for a holy God. If you believe that God is who He said He is, and you believe He's holy, He said, "I am holy, so therefore you be holy." So you have to have a reverence for that. You have to have a fear of God, a healthy yes. fear of God, yes. Yes. and understand that He's a holy God. In this particular text, they're talking about God's glory on the top of Mount Sinai appearing like a consuming fire. This imagery depicts the holiness and the judgment of God. Yes. Why is that important? Because we will all have to answer yes. for how we come before the Lord. Yes. Hear me when I say that. It may be fun and games right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, but it ain't going to be fun and games later. Yeah, well, when you have to right. get an account. Why did you come before me and you had all this unforgiveness in your yes. heart? And I told you to go to that person and forgive that person. Yes. Right. But you were hindering the Holy Spirit because you're walking in rebellion and you didn't do what I said, told you to do. Right. That's how the conversation is going to go. Yep. With God. Yes. I told you to forgive them. Yep. But you didn't. Now you live the rest of your life with this bitterness in you. He's a holy God. We will have to give an account for how we treat. Why did you talk nasty to that person? Why did you defile my daughter? Why did you say this to my man? You have to give an answer for every little thing. Right. God is holy. And I'm not saying we are, we are perfect. I'm not saying that we've got to be perfect, but we got to strive. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you something. The standard doesn't change. The standard, and no mistake about it, is Jesus Christ. That is the standard. That's not going to change no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm feeling, or what's in my heart. God doesn't care about that. The standard is Jesus. He said, imitate Jesus. Become the image of Christ. That's the standard. Spiritually, that is the standard. That standard doesn't lower because we're having a bad day. It's still the standard. The problem is, this: we want to lower the standard. So we can feel good about our standards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The standard is Jesus. Period. Make no mistake, there's days I fall, but that's an opportunity for me to get back up, brush my shoulders off, and try again. Amen. Because that is the standard. It's Jesus. I want to live the best up to Jesus the best I can. Amen. And every day is an opportunity to do that. We can't just tap, throw the towel in, tap out. Because it's hard, it's difficult. Is that the lesson we want our children to learn when things get difficult? We just tap out of it? No. No. We want them to lace up their boots, right. right? Get on their John Deere and get it done. That's, right. That's what we want them to do. We want them to fight. See, half the time we forget the word of war. God is a good God of order, y'all. Look how precise he was in the story of David bringing back the heart. Remember what I talked about that last week? Look how precise he was. He's a God of order. Dig into the instructions that he gave Moses concerning the tabernacle, how detailed it was, how precise it was. God is a God of order. Look at the clothes that he had to Aaron and his sons must wear as priests. How he said the sold them, how they had to be put together. How they would enter, even how they would enter into the tabernacle. God is a God of decency and order. So it would only make sense to me that he wants us to be people of order. That we prepare ourselves before coming in his presence. Why? Because that's part of who he is. And we are to be made in the image of Christ. Christ lives inside of us. So we should have this thing of preparedness to get prepared to come before him in the presence of God. It only makes sense. Yes. It makes sense. He don't want us to walk around with unforgiveness, bitterness, angry, mean, but no mean it in a rattlesnake for no reason all of just being mean. I know some of us have been hurt, abused, and our heart is stepped on. I understand that. We're all in the same boat. But that don't mean we gotta live there. Amen. We gotta get up. 
dust ourselves off. Right? Yes. He gave us armor for a reason. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Put on our armor and go to war. Amen. You gotta fight. And sometimes that means fight to be prepared to be in his presence. Because the enemy is gonna put all kinds of distractions in front of you and stop you from getting ready to go to the war. But you gotta fight through that. Amen. And you gotta have you know those t-shirts that says not today, Satan? Yeah. yeah. Not today. That's right. Not today. I'm getting my meal ready in the crock pot, getting my clothes, my kids' clothes laid out. In Jesus' name I am. Amen. 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 Am I right about it? Yes. yes. And I'm coming expecting God to move because I need yes. to hear something from the Lord. Amen. No matter what. That's right. Amen. It doesn't matter that I ran out of gas halfway here. But when I get there. Right. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Come on. It doesn't matter that he or she looked at me sideways this morning who was getting called. Me. I don't care about that. They got an answer for that. But when I get to the presence of God, right. Amen. Right. come on. Amen. You got to get what you need to get for you. Yes. Not for that, not for your help, but not for your complimentary or your helpmate, your spouse. For you. Because you don't have to answer for this. I hope y'all receive this today. I hope today's message really hit home with you today. We want to thank you for tuning in with us. And maybe you don't know this Jesus or this God I've been talking about. But I tell you, my friend, he wants to know you. All you have to do is ask him to come into your heart. To speak to him right there where you're at. Whether you're at your kitchen table your living room sofa, your dining room. Ask him to come into your heart and be king and Lord over your life. And then have the courage to turn from the wicked ways of your living and walk towards him. Believing that he died for you, my friend, and was raised three days later so that you can be reconciled back to him. He loves you and he wants you to love him. So know that there's nothing that you can do that can separate you from his love. Don't worry about your past history and what you did yesterday or what you did last week. Because the Bible says, for all have sinned and fell short of the glory of the Lord. That's including you and me. But he's willing, ready to forgive you. Ask him to come into your heart. Make him king and ruler of your life. Thank you for tuning in. Living Waters Community Church. Serving God. Loving people changing lives. May the Lord keep you and may the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.